He is moving along quite well elsewhere out on the roads. Let's take a look off the Corning Tower East coming across the bridge and around the octopus there. Everybody seems to be moving along quite well also. It's time to talk a little finance this morning. Joining us now on this Money Monday is Managing Director of DLG Wealth Management, Andy Guzzetti. Thank you so much for being with us. Good morning, Stephanie. How are you doing today? Very fine. Thank Holidays you. going well oh, so yeah. far? Yes. Very good. Well, today we are talking about not necessarily how much money you're bringing in, but how much money you're keeping. And right. that's really important to kind of make the difference with right. that. That kind of pops up this year at the end of the year when people start looking at their tax, they're going to get their tax returns mm -hmm. done and they just see how much they've paid in taxes and they always say, can I do anything to, to lessen the, the, the load on taxes? And one of the ways you can do is with municipal bonds. Municipal bonds are issued by state governments or local governments. The nice thing about them is that the interest is tax-free. But in order to invest in this area, you've got to know a couple of things. And the biggest thing I want to show you is taxable equivalent yield. And simply what that means is, um, and I'll show you and by example, is that if the person's in a 30% tax bracket and they look at a municipal bond that's paying 5%, they've got to say to themselves, what, is, what can I get out there that's taxable that's maybe better or is this 5% better than what's out there? And what we're talking about, the way you do that, you just say, okay, we're in the 30% tax bracket. Um, you keep 70%, so I divide the 5% by the 70%, and I get 7.14%. What this means is, if I have a 5% tax-free bond, it will take me a 7.14% taxable investment to make the same money. So then you say, well, if I can get a better amount than 7.14%, I'll go with the taxable. But if I can get a better at the tax-free, I'll go with the, the tax-free bond. So that's something to think about, taxable equivalent and yield. Because, again, as you said, it's not what you earn, it it's what you keep. Very good. And with municipal bonds, I know everyone, like, like you said, everyone wants to know how can we not pay so much in taxes? Sure. How can we keep more of our money for our own personal use and own personal investing instead of just giving it off right. to the government? And you say municipal bonds is kind of the route to go if the numbers work out correctly, but it's all about kind of figuring out what works for you. Right. There's a number of ways of doing it. You can do it by buying individual uh, municipal bonds. You can uh, invest in uh, uh, mutual funds either open-ended or closed-end. So there's a lot of ways of doing it where you don't have to be an expert in picking municipal bonds, which is a difficult area, but you like that tax-free income. And let me say this, if you pick a state that where you live in, it's double tax-free, it's federally tax-free, and state tax-free. Oh, so it's kind of working for you right. for a twofer right. right there. Well, with people, a lot of times when we're talking about investing and a lot of different investment options, sometimes certain options that may give you a better yield down the road, it takes a little bit of cash to get into those. With municipal bonds, does it matter how much income you have to invest? Is there any sort of cutoff? It is a tough area to do with a, a low amount of money in the individual bonds, but you can invest in mutual funds with as little as 2000 even even $1,000 to start out. So there's ways of getting in with a smaller amount of money if you want to get into tax-free income. So I think that's a really big thing with a lot of people, that a lot of people just don't have kind of the liquid money right now to be investing in these big things where they need a lot of cash to right, get in. Right. So this might be a great option, and hey, you don't have to pay as much taxes on it, too. Exactly. Always, again, it's not what you earn, it's what you keep. Very good. Well, Andy, thank you so much for being with us this morning. If you have any money questions, feel free to send us an email. You can post it on our Facebook page, and we will try to get your questions answered, because I know you have those questions out there. We will try to get them answered right here on Money Monday. Coming up next, we'll take a last look at this morning's headlines. And we got a full check of the weather before you head out. Uh, Philadelphia is still socked in by fog, starting to get some delays down in New York City as well. We'll take a full look right after the break. 46, of course, uh, plenty of brake lights for you. If you are headed southbound on the north way, you're going to need lots of extra time heading that direction. Elsewhere out on the roads right now, 787 north of exit 7. Lots of cars on the road, but everybody seems to be moving along quite well. All right, it's time to talk a little money this morning. Joining us now on This Money Monday is Managing Director of DLG Wealth Management, Andy Gazzetti. Thank you so much for being here this morning. We're being told that people are using credit cards more so now than ever before holiday season. Well, sure. I mean, credit cards are very convenient. Um, you were talking uh, earlier in the show about Green Monday. Think <laughs> about it. You can't have a Green Monday unless you have credit cards. It's very difficult to work on the, or buy on the Internet. 
Uh, you're talking about credit cards are great because you don't have to carry cash with you. Uh, so there's a lot of great things. But one of the things that you have to watch out for credit cards, and a lot of people don't talk about this, there's good credit and bad credit. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to show you an example of good credit. And uh, a simple example is if you buy a house and you pay $200,000 for that house and you pay cash, all right? Five years later, you sell the house for $250,000 for a profit of $50,000. If you think about it, you put in $200,000, you made fifty. dollars that's a 25% gain on your money. Very good. But let's talk about good debt or what, what we call in our business leverage. Same $200,000 house but we only put up $50,000, we've got a debt of $150,000. A few years later, we sell the house for $250,000, still a profit of $50,000, but remember, we only put up $50,000, so now you have a profit of 100,000, 100, I'm sorry, 100% versus the 25. Now there's some expenses in here, maybe we drop this down to 80%, but that's what good debt is. Now think about this when we're talking about credit cards. You don't have the equity, so you've got to be very, very careful. You're paying high, high rates of interest, um, very difficult. Um, we talk about the good, bad, and the ugly. It, there, <laughs> I talked about the good of credit cards, but there's no bad. It's all ugly. If, if you get into debt, if you, if you don't pay it off before you start paying interest, it's very difficult. If you get to a point where you're... Uh, where you're just paying the minimum, it's very difficult to pay it off. So be very careful this Christmas. I mean, there's some times you have to use it, and I understand that, but you got to be very careful, Kate. When do you suggest using the credit cards? Maybe for big ticket items, or should you just try not to use it as much as possible? You try not to use it unless you can pay it off before you start paying interest payments. In other okay. words, the end of the month, you have some float, uh, you don't want to carry cash around for a big item. But again, you just, you, you just can't get into that debt where you can't pay it off or difficult to pay it off. There are times you have to do it, but be very careful with the credit card. All right, sounds good. Some very solid advice. Thank you. If you have any money questions, send us an email or post it on our Facebook page, and maybe it will be answered right here on Money Monday. Up next, we will take a last look at this morning's headlines. And we got a full check of the weather before you head out the door. We'll be right back. From the hustle, bustle, and planning of the holidays, we preserve memories of a lifetime. From our family at DLG Wealth Management, we wish you and yours a happy, healthy, and successful 2012. Whether you're in the mood for Chinese, Japanese, a bit faster. We're almost to the new year, and with that, there's no looking back, only forward thinking. Joining us now to help us reevaluate our financial well-being is Managing Director of DLG Wealth Management, Andy Guzzetti. Thank you so much for being with us the week before Christmas. Good morning, Stephanie. Always great to be here. And we're talking fiscal exams today. Not physical exams, fiscal exams. Right. What we're talking about is just to look forward in 2012, some things you can do in the last couple of weeks of the year to maybe help your financial well-being going into 2012. We all need that. <laughs> right. The first one I like to talk about is protect your credit. You know, we're going down late in the season, the selling season or the buying season mm -hmm. for Christmas, and those uh, store credit cards might start looking pretty good. But be very careful for a couple of reasons. Number one, high, uh, high rates, 20, up to 29%. And the other thing is, is every time that you apply for credit, it, it is a negative towards your credit score because they look at it and say you're applying for more credit. So be very careful when you're looking at these store uh, credit cards. The second one is rebalance your portfolios. I talk about this a lot. Mm -hmm. You asset allocate, you've got your things all set up and then things happen during the year and something goes up dramatically and you want to make sure you're not over allocated in one area so take a look at your portfolios whether it's in your 401k IRA or in your regular brokerage account take a look and make sure you're not over allocated it'll help you with reducing risk and also increasing your return on the portfolio. Definitely, we've talked about that the past couple of weeks Always, now. always talking about it because this is a big time to do it. Absolutely, so you can always re-watch our segments that we've done in the past right. talking about specifically our portfolios. Absolutely. The other one is, uh, this is a good time to look at um, 
maybe taking more tax. It's 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 tough to say, but taking more taxes this year. If you you know if you're looking at Washington, they're thinking of maybe raising taxes mm -hmm. 2012, 2013. If you have the ability to move some income into 2011, you might want to do it. Pay some extra taxes this year, but it may be a greater increase in 2012, 2013. So time your taxes. That's a that's something you should look for. The other thing we always do is take a look at your losers. If you've got any stocks that are losers and you want to harvest those losses, make sure you do it before December 31st or this year, December 30th. Uh, just watch out. It's called the wash rule. If you use a, a, a loss, if you sell a stock, you use the loss on your taxes, you can't buy that stock back for 31 days. It's called the wash rule. So be careful of that. And the last thing is set a budget for 2012. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I mean, you know, I know it's good to say where you're going to uh, where you're going to spend your money, but I think also it makes you see where can I save more money. And another thing you should look at is there too much money in your checking account, earning no interest. Should you start putting some of that money into a savings account or something else, earning more interest? And a budget will help you do that. Definitely. A budget is always a great thing. And like you said, it's not just for, you know, where you're spending your money, but looking at the places that where maybe we could pinch a couple of pennies. Because if you can do that in, you know, three or four different places, that can add up to a couple hundred bucks. And saving, putting it away. Absolutely. Definitely. Well, Andy, thank you so much for being with us. And we're actually going to get uh, next week, next Monday, the day after Christmas, we're going to have our next five tips. I've got five more for you. Yes. Getting into 2012. Right. So uh, take the five today. Maybe doing a little bit of work, and then next Monday we'll have another five for you to take a look at. Well, if you have any money questions, you can send us an email. You can also post it on our Facebook page, and we will try to get it answered right here on Money Monday. Well, up next, we'll take a last look at this morning's headlines. And we got a full check of the weather before you head out the door. We'll be right back. From the hustle, bustle, and planning of the holidays, we preserve memories of a lifetime. From our family at DLG Wealth Management, we wish you and yours a happy, healthy, and successful 2012. Hyundai over on Albany and uh, really not a lot of traffic out there, a lot of people off, schools are off, so no problems on the roadways this morning. Money Monday here at Fox 23, and today we are here at DLG Wealth Management with Managing Director uh, Andy Guzzetti. Thank you so much for having us here today. Great, great to be here always, Stephanie. And we're continuing our conversation this morning on our fiscal well-being going into 2012. We all want to make sure that everything is sound. We kind of have a chance to re-rack some things. Uh, so we have our last five points that we're talking about today. Right, we did five uh, last week, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to continue on. Uh, the next one I, I, I talk about is give to charity. If you do uh, uh, do your taxes and you have some deductions, a good place to be is, char is uh, giving some charity. So take a look. Have you given enough to charity? Is there room for more? And it can help you out on your taxes. Uh, you know, number two is, or the second one is give to relatives. Uh, right now you can give $13,000 to a relative and it doesn't go against your uh, taxes. Uh, when you pass away in, uh, in your inheritance taxes. Uh, that might change. They're thinking of going from $5 million down to $1 million, a lot of things going on. So it might be a good time if you want to give some gifts, you can give a maximum of 13000 Take a look at that one. Uh, another big one is evaluate risk. Mm -hmm. uh, right now in our industry, it's called risk off and risk on. In other words, the, uh, it's a general feeling in the market, and right now risk is off. People aren't taking chances in the market. So as you look to go into 2012, can you handle risk? Maybe you want to take a little risk off the table and, and look at it as risk off, risk on. Right now it's risk off in, in the markets, and you should take a look at your portfolio. Remember we talked about rebalancing. That's another way of doing it. Absolutely, and with risk, of course, comes reward. So that's why you're saying that, if, hey, if you can, you If know. you can do it, you feel comfortable, sleep at night, risk on. But I'll tell you, a lot of professionals have risk off right now. Mm -hmm. uh, check your paperwork. In other words, check the beneficiaries on your IRAs or on your insurance policies. Um, check your insurance policies to see whether your uh, homeowner's policy fits what you have now. You might need more. Check your insurance, your life insurance. Do you need more or maybe less? 
right now. You might be paying too much for life insurance. So check your, but a big one is check your paperwork. A lot of people do not have the correct beneficiaries because again, things change. Mm -hmm. And you want to be able to have the correct beneficiary because down the road that could cause some troubles. So it's a good time, beginning of the year, to kind of reevaluate that. Right. And the, and the last one is adjust your retirement plans. Take a look how much money you've put into your 401k plan or your IRA plan. Can you put a little bit more in? Are you at the max? Because you always want to be able to save money tax deferred. That's something we're going to talk about another time because it's best to save money tax deferred. It grows faster. So if you can put more money in, so now's a nice time. You got a, you got a week. Maybe you can get more money into your 401, uh, for, into your IRA. You can do it till April 15th. But check it out right now as you're doing this fiscal exam. Very good. Yeah, we talk about physical exams a lot of times uh, when we're talking about activity and stuff. But hey, your money is what's important, and physical exams are just as important heading into 2020. Absolutely. It could help your physical exam. There you go. <laughs> All right, Andy. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, if you have any financial questions, you can send us an email or you can even post it on our Facebook page and we will try to get it answered right here on Money Monday. Turning now to Famous on Fox, Tom Cruise's latest mission has won a holiday weekend.